back everyone to our regular meeting scheduled for 7 p.m. this evening for the Capitola City Council meeting. Before we jump into tonight's agenda, Chloe had a few words. Thank you, Mayor Brooks. In accordance with California Senate Bill 361, this meeting is not physically open to the public. Council and staff are meeting via Zoom, and there are several ways for the public to watch and participate. Information on how to join the meeting using Zoom or a landline mobile phone, along with how to submit public comment during the meeting tonight, is available on our website, cityofcapitola.org, and on the published meeting agenda. The public can also live stream the meeting on the city's website. As always, this meeting is cablecast live on Charter Communications Cable TV Channel 8 and is being recorded to be rebroadcast on the following Wednesday at 8 a.m. and on Saturday following the first rebroadcast at 1 p.m. on Charter Channel 71 and Comcast Channel 25. Our technician tonight is Walter. Thank you, Walter, and thank you, Mayor Brooks. Chloe, and thank you, Walter. If you can all please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, we're now going to move to item two, presentations for our police policy review. And Chief Dowdy, this is your item. Okay, I'm going to start by sharing my screen. Okay, can you hear me and see my screen? We can. Awesome. Okay, well, <clears throat> good evening, Mayor Brooks, uh, council members, and, and city staff. Uh, tonight, um, I have the pleasure of presenting a, a couple topics. Uh, the first item is the 2021 Santa Cruz County Criminal Justice Council Report. And the second uh, is a surprise, surprise update on a new program that the police department's really excited about, and that's going to be a chief advisory uh, committee that will be coming in 2022. So let me start by beginning to talk about the Criminal Justice Council of, uh, of Santa Cruz County. And, okay. So I'll start with what is the CJC? And really, uh, let me actually let me let me start by highlighting the great work of the Criminal Justice Council of Santa Cruz. Um, it, it was started or formed 30 years ago, and it's made up of, of high-level public partners from a wide spectrum of expertise and diversity throughout Santa Cruz County. And the CJC was created to increase the coordination between the criminal justice partners, nonprofits, educational leaders, and other members. Um, the membership of the CGC includes um, several uh, board of supervisors, uh, city council members, the sheriff, Santa Cruz County Sheriff, there's several police chiefs, uh, probation, Santa Cruz County Courts, uh, members of Santa Cruz County Courts, we have the, the district attorney, defense council, school executives, and, and quite a few other nonprofit agencies. So this group is made up of very competent um, public leaders um, looking at criminal justice in Santa Cruz County. And each year, uh, the Criminal Justice Council selects a topic. And for 2021, uh, following the death of uh, George Floyd and some national discussions around police policies, the CJC appropriately focused on a regional review and analysis of the public safety policies for the police departments in Santa Cruz, in Santa Cruz County. And so the CJC formed a subcommittee that was led by Supervisor Zach Friend and Council Member Justin Cummings, and so they had the subcommittee. And then we had uh, representatives from the City of Capitol, which included um, Council Member Kristen Peterson and then Chief McManus. Uh, the CJC reviewed local police policies and focused on use of force, the technology, independent oversight, behavior health response, and community transparency. And we dive into exactly what they were looking for. And so the purpose was uh, was that the CJC really wanted to examine local police policy to determine three three things. Um, the first thing was whether or not they were consistent and, and had alignment throughout the county. 
So, you know, Santa Cruz County is such a small county that people can transition between jurisdiction to jurisdiction. So just seeing that there's consistency amongst the police agencies as someone traverses through the county and they have an interaction with law enforcement. And the second piece was trying to identify if there's anything, any gaps that need to be addressed. And then finally, if there's any opportunities to improve. And so with that, the CDC did make a very noteworthy observation that all the law enforcement agencies participated and were very open and transparent during the process. So the next slide, I'm just going to highlight Capitol Police Department because, again, this touched all the different law enforcement agencies in Santa Cruz County. All of the different departments, you can find these links on the CJC website. So this is what you can find on the CJC website, and it talks about the different, some of the highlighted issues that is in that report that you have in front of you. And on the left, you'll see the police topic, and on the right, you'll see the actual policy that you can find. All of our policies are online. It's mandated by law, and all the Santa Cruz County agencies have those online accessible to the public. For the policies that you do see that have a no policy next to them, quite honestly, for those that you don't have a policy, such as like the no knock or the dynamic entry, it's because we don't have, those policies primarily sound like SWAT teams and tactical teams, and we just don't have those with our police department. The no knock warrants are justified by law, but again, it has to be a policy with some sort of tactical team behind it, which we just don't have. Other agencies do regulate the actions with directives from the chief of police for like high-risk search warrants and policies such as those. The CJC report did give us the opportunity to explore in ways that we can improve. Sorry, and let me just jump into what the kind of big key takeaways were from the CJC report, is that there was widespread policy alignment in Santa Cruz County, so that was a very, very positive report. And then that all of the Santa Cruz County law enforcement agencies have updated and modern policies regarding use of force, technology deployment, and release of information to the public. And among the agencies who don't have a dedicated, excuse me, that don't have a dedicated unit for behavioral health, that they were all interested in creating an agency that would respond to those types of calls. And then one of the things that Supervisor Friend noted is that we believe that this is actually Santa Cruz County's ability to be the first to conduct this type of transparent regional policy review in the United States. And then the CJC did want to point out that the report is not a comprehensive look at local agency policies, but it really provides more of a transparent overview of the policies that work to ensure that officers respond safely and are responsible to key situations. And with that, I know that we do have a packet that is, the packet in that review is publicly available, so it was a really, really, really great effort for the CJC. And with that, we kind of spun into, I'll give you a little update now on what's next, the next steps for Capitol PD as we kind of approach 2022. And so with that, for 2022, what my goal is to create this Chief's Advisory Committee. And what it does is it creates a link between the community and the police department. It's used as a resource for the Chief of Police. And it's a mechanism for the community and stakeholders to understand community relations, understand police policies and procedures, learn about police initiatives, and then make suggestions towards Capitol Police Department operations as we look towards quality of life issues for our residents. And some of those examples can include program review and community outreach assistance. So on this question of who would make up this type of committee, the composition of the committee within my vision is that we have five to seven key stakeholders. I want to keep the group manageable and they need to be active community members. I want to represent a very diverse group of stakeholders within the community that can make those recommendations. And some examples, and this is just kind of a range of interest, is that we're obviously looking for community leaders, business owners, education leaders, public relations, the faith community, and youth representation. All right, so what are the next steps for 2022? 
2022. Um, you know, Capitol Police Department were really committed to this to this program. It was something that Chief McManus and I had discussed. And um, one of the things that we we did is that we we kind of folded this into some of our internal promotional processes. And so we used it as a, as a one of our starting tests, written exams. And actually, uh, Captain Ryan is, is working on an SLI project that has to do with the Chief's Advisory Board. So we can get that kind of um, internal buy-in and feedback from, from our agency. So the goal is to have a draft program by the end of 2021 uh, and to finalize a policy by early 22, um, looking at membership applications by the end of June of 22, and then creation of the actual committee by the fiscal year of July of 2022. And then, let's see, as I kind of wrap up here, uh, I just want to extend um, a, a major thanks to primarily Mayor Brooks for early conversations about these very, very important topics about uh, police policies and looking at the eight kind of ways. I know that that was kind of those first kind of first conversations that we had internally. And then uh, more importantly, or not more importantly, but equally as important is just that really the the time and effort that Councilmember Peterson and Chief McManus put in with the, the excellent work that they did for public safety serving on the, the ad hoc uh, PJC committee. And with that, I really appreciate the time, your time to, uh, and for listening. And we'll offer, because I don't get to see, I just see my slideshow. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing so I can see everyone. You should have all been frowning right when it came back, right? Just to really show our dismay. No. Uh, great first presentation, Chief Daly. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I know it's not easy, so especially Thank talking you. to your screen. Um, council members, Vice Mayor Story, anyone with questions? Vice Mayor Story, perfect. Thank you, Mayor Brooks, and uh, um, congratulations once again, uh, Chief Valley. Um, and I applaud your efforts to start up a, a community advisory committee. Um, I look forward to seeing how that develops. But I want to particularly ask about um, one of the survey questions um, among the various uh, jurisdictions was about having a dedicated staff or unit for behavioral and mental health issues. And the notice we identified is, of course, not having that, uh, but being able to benefit from that and supportive of uh, maybe starting up. I don't know if it was maybe a multi-jurisdictional unit um, to respond to those types of calls. Um, I was wondering if you had any thoughts about, or if there was discussions about how we may move forward um, and, you know, being a small jurisdiction, um, whether there are any, you know, a feasible and affordable ways for us to be able to uh, have such a dedicated um, unit. Sure. And, and great question and, and a very valid topic right now. Um, so as far as the resources go, and the mental health, is, mental health workers that are out in the field right now with the uniform personnel, they're out there. They're not housed in, in our building per se, but we do have, they are available to us. So they, they, the Santa Cruz Police Department has mental health workers and the Sheriff's Department has mental health workers that are available to us when they're working. So depending on uh, the call for service, we, we have the ability to request those resources and they're readily available. Um, I, I, I will note that the CJC is actually, I believe, taking on at least some of the well, I'm sorry, CDC is going to take on the homelessness issue next, I believe, next year. Um, but the, the topic of mental health and law enforcement and, and that partnership is, is something that's ongoing with all of us, and we're all very interested in it. And I really think that there's going to be some, some funding that's going to be coming towards us, and uh, we would absolutely welcome any partnership with mental health workers and to help our, our uniform personnel. Absolutely. Well, thank you. That that actually um, seems kind of promising. So, and I would certainly want to, um, you know, support us to um, move forward in that effort um, and seeing if we could um, collaborate with uh, the county mental health 
in order to get that kind of first response um, and uh, and to support um, you know our police force. So uh, thank you for bringing that to our attention and, and moving that forward. Appreciate it. Council member, oh, any other council hands on? Oh, okay. There's no other comments. Again, thank you for the presentation, Chief Barry. Have a good night. And it just disappeared like that. <laughs> there we go. Okay. On to item three, report out on closed session. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. We had two closed sessions on the agenda tonight. Um, in one of the closed sessions regarding the matter of NRA national prescription opiate litigation, Council voted to join the settlement agreement and authorize the city manager to take all necessary actions to effectuate Council's decision. Thank you. Thank you so much, Samantha. So now we move on to item four for additional materials. Do we have any this evening? Yes, Mayor Brooks. Uh, there were three public comment emails received regarding item 9A. That's the outdoor dining ordinance item. Thank you. Thank you, Chloe. For item five additions and deletions to the agenda. That has no changes to the agenda tonight. Thank you, Jamie. Item six, oral communications. This allows time for members of the public to address the city council on any consent item on tonight's agenda or any topic within the jurisdiction of the city that is not on general government. Do we have any comments from the public? Mayor Brooks, I do not see any emails on this item and I don't see any hand raised to speak to this item. Oh wait. I'm sorry, I do now see someone. This, and this is general government, correct? I mean, this is a, a consent. Yeah, so again, this is just a reminder for those of uh, the public who are asking to speak. This is an item not on tonight's agenda or in reference to an item on consent. You will have. The Grief Dog Deli. Okay, go ahead and unmute yourself. Yeah, we just passed through the outdoor dining, so I just wanted to make sure that we were and going to cover those uh, items on sidewalk uh, seating. Yeah, and so that's going to be in a few in a few more items. We did not talk about okay. it. Okay, sorry, sorry about that. Sorry. It's all okay. <laughs> okay. okay, I'll stay. I'll stay tuned. <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much. Okay. I know this stuff gets tricky, folks. Um, okay, so item seven, this is for staff and city council comments. Staff, do you have any comments? First, I just want to announce um, everyone is eligible for booster shots. If you have been your six months or more since you got your Moderna or Pfizer vaccine or two months or more since the Johnson & Johnson, I just went and got mine this afternoon up at the Cabrillo drive through clinic that they have there. Just want to encourage everyone to do that. And then our public works director, Steve, he has a little update for you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I just want to give you a quick update on the two ongoing construction projects we have. The first is the wharf project uh, that is replacing the piles, the steel piles at the head of the wharf and stabilizing the structure under the restaurant. There in week two of the project, they have completed replacement of four of the six pilings along the head of the wharf. They anticipate having all the piles replaced by the end of next week, and at which point they will move to stabilize the structure under the restaurant. And at this time, they are on schedule to complete the work by Christmas time. So that's their goal is to get out of there for a holiday. Um, regarding the signal project on 41st Avenue, I just want to give everybody a heads up that the contractor will be installing conduits across from one side of 41st to the other at three of the intersections within the city. Um, they're going to try starting early in the morning and kind of working through the noontime hour and see how that works with traffic control. Um, so there will be some congestion there with that. If that doesn't work, they um, will consider moving the work into the nighttime. So we're kind of 
see what works. They're just going to be closing a lane at a time as they go across, but they will have moving uh, <clears throat> traffic control. Um, they're still waiting for equipment to come in regarding the actual installation of uh, the controllers at each cabinet, including the Caltrans cabinet. So it's very likely that the actual work of the installation of the equipment will not begin until the new year. Uh, we anticipate the project being done in February. And then the system, they have to take track counts for about six weeks, right now, I'm sorry, three weeks before they turn on the system. So we're looking at March before we can uh, probably see the benefits of the project. That's all. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Steve. Okay, any council comments? Okay, seeing no council comments, I just had one. Um, 3CE is our energy source. You usually see their name on your PG&E bill on their website. They have just posted a reimbursement um, program for those who um, have bought a e-vehicle and now even e-bike. There's a really large incentive, anywhere from $500 to $4,000. So I highly encourage people who have bought one or who might be thinking about buying one to um, participate in that program. So again, that 3CE or Central Coast Community Power Program, um, and you can Google that at any time. All right, moving on to item eight. This is consent. All items listed on consent will be enacted by one motion in the form listed below. So that's item 8A through F. And would any of our council members like to entertain a motion? I can move it. I'll second. And we have a first from council member Kaiser and a second from my vice mayor Story to approve items 8A through F. May I have a roll call, please? Council member Bertrand. I approve. Council member Kaiser. Aye. Council member Peterson. Aye. Vice Mayor Aye. Story. Aye. Mayor Brooks. Aye. Thank you. All right, moving right along, or excuse me, sorry, Chloe, that item passes unanimously. Moving right along to item nine, eight. This is outdoor dining ordinance. Recommended action item one to consider the planning commission recommendations regarding the draft outdoor dining ordinance and either, and I'm going to pause right there, Council Member Kaiser. Thank you, Mayor Brooks. Uh, because of my employment from Paradise Beach Grill that partakes in the outdoor dining and my financial um, conflict, I will have to recuse from this item. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Kaiser. So I'll just go ahead and continue to read this. is the outdoor dining ordinance separate from our temporary ordinance that we have in place. So this is consider planning commission recommendations regarding the draft outdoor dining ordinance and either provide direction on this draft ordinance tonight and consider schedule for a first reading and adoption or introduce by title only waiting for the reading of the text an ordinance of the city council of the city of capital repealing and replacing the municipal code as listed and amending it related to outdoor dining in the public right of way. So that'd be item one. And then item two is to consider options to extend, terminate, or modify the temporary outdoor dining program currently scheduled to end on January 3rd. So we'll take both of those items separately um, just as an FYI because one does trail the other. Katie, is this your item? It is. Thank you, Mayor Brooks and Council. Um, just as Mayor Brooks explained, I'm going to start with an overview of the outdoor dining ordinance. This is a long-term program for the city of Capitola, and it's looking at creating a new regulation for a up to three-year program that could eventually be extended into a permanent program. And then following the discussion on the ordinance, we'll talk about our COVID-19 temporary dining um, and, what, and what the council would like to do in terms of extending the program or letting it expire, um, it's due to expire on January 3rd, 2021. So thank you. And okay. I'll jump into the draft ordinance. Thanks. Okay, there we go. So just a quick overview 
of where we've been. So back in spring of 2020, the city council issued an emergency temporary outdoor use permit throughout uh, the city of Capitola, not only within the village. Then in April of 2021, um, after almost a year of the outdoor dining, the city council directed staff to develop a permanent outdoor dining program. We came back on two more occasions to the city council, uh, the first time in June and brought forth two surveys, one that was um, finding um, outreach to the public and whether or not there was support for the program and that there, there was a majority of support from the public in creating a permanent program. And then also uh, a survey from the restaurants. And again, there was support for a permanent program. So with that, we began drafting an ordinance. We also, um, um, so we began drafting an ordinance. It was put out for public review in late September. And on October 7th, the Planning Commission reviewed the draft ordinance for the first time. They, at that hearing, um, the public noticing requirement is really just to put the public noticing within the paper. Uh, the Planning Commission asked us to continue the item, give us some feedback on the draft, they asked us to continue the item and put up notices throughout the village and also to send the little green cards to all residents within the central village. So um, it was continued to the November 4th hearing and um, the planning commission went through the ordinance and gave, uh, recommended, um, gave us feedback on all of the items and direction. But ultimately, their recommendation was to delay the adoption of the ordinance until the prototype design is complete. And I'll go into that for you. So they're, they're, when they reviewed the ordinance, there were three significant changes that occurred. Um, the first was to remove sidewalk dining altogether. The second was to modify the locations of the street dining, and I'll show you more detail of that. Um, and then also in terms of timing, they asked to delay the ordinance until a prototype design be in place. And the reason for asking for the prototype design to be in place first was to ensure the best design fits the ordinance. They had concerns about angled parking and as well as uh, to ensure the on-site bicycle parking requirement would fit within the design. Um, however, in their recommendations of modification to the ordinance, there is now an in lieu option for the bicycle parking requirement. Um, so with um, the differences between the original city council direction on what to include in the ordinance and the planning commission's recommendation being um, having three significant changes from the original uh, direction from city council. We brought forth tonight two ordinances. One ordinance is the planning commission recommendation of ordinance one. And then the second ordinance is planning commission recommendation, but it, doesn't, it includes City Council's original direction on locations for sidewalk and street dining. Uh, on this slide, you, I, I just bring up the differences of those, those three items. So for sidewalk dining, Planning Commission said to remove all sidewalk dining um, from the ordinance. Within the original direction from City Council, it was to allow sidewalk dining specifically within the village on Monterey Avenue and on the wharf. And the draft ordinance also includes allowing it in the mixed use neighborhoods as well as our commercial, community commercial and regional commercial districts. Um, so to, and then the other uh, change in the street dining decks, uh, the Planning Commission recommended limiting the street dining decks to Esplanade and San Jose Avenue. And the original direction from City Council was to also include Capitola Avenue and Monterey Avenue. The Planning Commission recommended removing Capitola Avenue because of the, how busy the street is. Um, and then Monterey Avenue because it's a major drop-off location for beach goers, and they thought there was more uh, public good in having five additional spaces for the beach goers to drop off there for the beach in a convenient space. Um, and then again, we talked about the timing of the prototype. So this slide goes over all the items that stayed the same between Ordinance 1 and Ordinance 2. Um, 
the number of bicycle park or the number of parking spaces for the dining decks is twenty five the bicycle parking um both ordinances include two biking bike spaces per automobile space and it also adds an in-lieu option for a central location for bicycle parking which makes it pay in two sound um through the course of the review by planning commission they recommended prohibiting amplified sound in all music for signs uh, one business identification sign and one menu sign they both be limited to two square feet each materials the planning commission added specific guidance for what material could be appropriate and which materials are not appropriate um, activated space this is a new standard um, after seeing so many spaces in the village for the temporary ordinance not being utilized they added an activation requirement that the restaurants be open a minimum of five days per week and utilizing that space having it available for customers during those days that they're open and weather pending and then stormwater we had, there's new requirements for stormwater and also utilities maintenance um, we added some specificity of new standards that are related to trash the upkeep of plants and regularly cleaning the area um, another shift was for the administrative policy originally it was the um, city manager could authorize modifications to the admin policy the planning commission recommended that city council authorize any modifications to the admin policy so that's in both ordinances and then private property originally we had um, a section um, requiring that any private property that wanted to add uh, outdoor dining could through a conditional use permit um, this one I, I the planning commission recommended removing and I want to strongly recommend that we stay with that if we want to include private property we should come back with a really well thought out ordinance on that um, and how and create some standards um, for review if we want to include private property. I think more time needs to be spent on that. So Coastal Commission review. So that, that's, the, that, that's the overview of what was included in the ordinance. Um, so we did, we took the draft ordinance to the Coastal Commission. They reviewed the ordinance and provided feedback. They asked us to reduce the amount of permits to about half of what was um, originally um, allocated within the COVID-19 permit. They also suggested be a temporary program so it can be uh, reviewed and make sure it's working um, and not limiting any coastal access or creating coastal access issues. And then they suggested that the use of funds for outdoor dining for um, the leases could be should be reinvested into coastal access. So all three items have been included in our updated ordinance. Um, Another item is the, uh, the new concept of a blanket coastal development permit, which for the prototype design, um, once the planning commission, once we have a prototype design, um, Okay, looks like Katie is frozen. Jamie, and it seems like everyone's bandwidth is just a little shaky. Uh, Councilmember Bertrand has turned off his camera because um, he's also having some issues. Um, so just want you to know that he is still with us. And mm -hmm. also, Jamie, just so you know, I'm seeing people pass along host permission uh, access. And I just want to make sure that at least someone here in this room still has the host access. I don't know who has host access right now. I believe it's Chief Daly. Interesting. I do see it under my name. And I, well, how would you like me to proceed? I think you're okay for now. Just sit tight. Okay. So. We can hear Katie a second here. My assumption is this is about either she had power failure or internet failure. I can run the slides and go through them um, from where she left off. Can, can you tell us how many more slides she had, do you know, by any chance? Give me one moment. 
So the last slide we covered was the blanket prototype. You know, it looks like, unfortunately, the version that I'm accessing, no, it's right. Blanket prototype. So that's slide eight, and we got through slide 20. So there's okay. a fair amount of Okay. Um, do you want to shoot her a text and see if she's going to be able to come back? Sure. And then what we can do is we can move on to the other item, um, item 9C, while we wait. I prefer for her to present just because. For sure, she's done so much work on this. The, um, oh, so the internet is down, it sounds like at City Hall. Oh, oh okay. So, okay. So are we still broadcasting? As far as it's I can tell, happening. we are, from from what I can see, this is Chloe. Okay. okay. I'm going to, um, if we have people in the participants, I'm going to just do a quick test. Raise oh. your hands if you can hear I'll us. be back. Perfect. Okay. So we're still, they are still able to be here. So I can see their hands going up and down, no, which makes me believe we are live still. Well, it sounds like it sounds like it's pretty full. There's not enough bandwidth at this point to do both video and audio. So I just suggested that Katie try because Chloe, you are on. Chloe, you are on right now with audio only. Is that correct? Jamie, I think what I just heard is that you said on television they can hear us and not see us. Is that correct? That is true, if that's what you said. And we can hear you just fine, I think. Okay. 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 So, Mayor Brooks, I think we have a couple options that you just outlined. We can either go to the next item um, and continue this for a moment or two. Uh, we would need to get um, Councilwoman Kaiser back on, I think, for item 9B, though. Yes. And are you, whose item was item 90? That is Larry. Larry, are you on? Larry's not on. Okay. Folks, oh, we have a problem. We have a problem. We, well, our bandwidth has gone down. <laughs> it's not even metaphorically speaking. This is just too close to Thanksgiving. Um, I see Katie coming back, connecting. Larry's back at home. Things are happening. Um, let's take a, I'm just going to give it a five minute break right now to see if we can figure this out. So I'm going to officially pause this meeting and take a five minute break. Chloe, are you with me for that? Yes, I think that's a great idea. Thank you, Mayor Brooks. Okay. All right. So folks um, in the audience, go ahead and lower your hands if you can still hear me. And we will try to get this back on in five minutes. We will return at 944. 744. <laughs>
for a while, and it's weird. I so I don't know why it's right. working here. Is it working? It was. I was on Zoom so fine. I'm trying to even get to the device, and I can't. Oh, get to the I mean, if you want, if Katie wants to come down here. It doesn't mean it will work down here. Oh, okay, so. Um, so we're all, because we're all, this is all connected to the same equipment. Got it. No, I understand. So what, you go, can I, I do move, anything? Can I end the you ended the Zoom. Because I, I was on my phone. Do you want me to try to open the Zoom up again as you? Um, I can log in as you. Uh, Is every everything's working for me. Okay, well, don't do anything then. Don't do, okay, don't. Oh, yeah, don't do anything. Okay, <laughs> I, I, I. Why, why are you still here? What?
don't know what's happening. <laughs> well, you're the one who said this is the item you thought might be long. Well, that's true. <laughs> I know. Ah. Poor Larry. Is Larry out there? No. No, and your mic is hot. Yeah. I won't say anything.
everyone who wanted to speak will be able to. And I see a chat from someone saying they can't hear that we're breaking up. So that even speaks more to the concern that I have about moving forward with this item tonight, not knowing. just kind of finish that thought there. So for those who are listening or able to listen, where we're at now is we're concerned that there were some people who might have dropped off the call who really wanted to participate in this conversation. Um, and so that we, those who are back and here and willing to um, share your comments, we will, you will have that opportunity. The, the issue is, again, we're just worried that some people didn't come back, um, and that there's just some sort of weird internet thing going on out there in the ether world. So, um, I see two council members' hands raised. I do want to ask one question, though, for discussion's sake. In terms of timeline, Jamie, and how we have our Jan we have a December meeting and a January meeting, while we're taking council comments, um, on this matter. Can you look at timelines and whether we would need to hold a special meeting or when we need to make to keep these things moving along? So I'm going to um, have, I saw Vice Mayor Story can raise and then I'll go to Council Member Bertrand. But that's my question, Jamie, for you to ponder. Do you want an answer? No, I'm going to take Vice Mayor Story's okay. question or can first. Vice Mayor Story, are you still with us? I believe I am. Uh, oh, there you are. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and just to throw another uh, curve into the scheduling mix, um, we also want to acknowledge that, you know, uh, one of our tasks this evening was to make a decision on the continuation or not of the temporary parkway program, which expires on January 3rd. Um, so it seems to me that if we're going to continue this, we should do it uh, prior to that date or date certain. Um, so we can deal with that issue before the expiration. Okay, and I, we have one more meeting before that on December 9th. Okay, Council Member Bertrand. If you're trying to talk to, oh, there you are. You're on yeah. Okay, so you can hear me. That's good. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, for me, uh, as in the chat, it's, it's very choppy, and I really don't think that I can be a part of a conversation about this. Okay, and just a reminder for council members. Um, uh, for all intents and purposes. What? I don't know if you can hear me. We can hear you. I was just going to uh, remind our council members to not read the chat, please, so they're not public comments. Oh, it, 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 
came up as a, a message. <laughs> okay, so I got that. You know, I'm, this discussion I think should be in a, a form which is internet perfect. <laughs> it's very important. So many people are interested in so I prefer to put it off like Kristen said and um, in recognition of the fact that people are online, may not be online in December, I certainly think it's important we take their comments now uh, to be part of the record. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Bertrand. Council Member uh, Jamie, are you chomping at the bit? Oh, okay, Council Member Peterson. Yeah, I just think based on the concerns that we're hearing from, from other council members that we should continue this either to our December 9th meeting, which I know is kind of a tough one because that's when we get kind of our change of the guard and all that. So either that we continue it to our December 9th meeting or we have a discussion about holding a special meeting in the week of December 13th um, to take only this item. So my recommendation would be at this point that we schedule a special meeting next week, which would then let us hold our second. And Samantha, you can help me out here. I believe as long as you hold your second reading at least seven days after the first reading. Ah, okay. So we could do a special meeting next week. And I think given the challenges that I'm hearing from a lot of folks, it might make sense to just do a do over of the general government agenda this evening. So, um, just because I'm, I'm, I'm not clear whether or not Council Member Bertrand, he was suggesting that he was having a difficult time participating. And it may be the best thing to do is to just do a do over of the whole thing, whether or not you want to take public comment. The awkward piece about taking public comment this evening is, is I, I sort of feel like they should see the whole presentation. Um, but I think that's your decision, um, Mayor Brooks. Okay. I like it. I like it all. Are we looking at the date of November 29th then? Is that five days? So, on November, yeah, so it doesn't need to be five days from today. It needs to be five days prior to the December 9th meeting. So we can do, we can, we can try to pick a date for next week right now, if everybody has their calendars available. For those who are here, that might be helpful to them too, in the audience, to know when sure. to postpone the meeting. Um, the 29th, 30th, the 1st, all, uh, the 29th, 30th, and 1st in the evenings work well with me. Should we say six o'clock on the, First, it's Wednesday. I got a thumbs up from Council Member Bertrand, thumbs up from Council Member Peterson. Vice Mayor Story, I don't see thumbs from you. Oh. Um, Cause your camera's not on. <laughs> now there's my thumb. All right, there's a thumb. So well, we need we to have to, uh, Council Member Kaiser, uh, but she's off. We will check in with her, but I think for this, we have a, yeah, we have a, um, what's it called? Forum. That thing for all of us. Forum. forum, thank you. Okay, we have that forum that's required. Okay, so Council Member Peterson, would you like to finalize that motion you started? Sure. Uh, I'd like to move that we, um, continue all of the items on our general government for tonight's agenda to a special meeting to take place on Wednesday, December 1st at 6 p.m. Second. And just for clarity, that's item 9A, B and C? Yes, all of, all of the general government items from this evening. Jamie, is that what you were meaning? Um, that was what I was suggesting. Okay. Would Checking with Councilmember Kaiser to see if she says she's not available on Wednesday. Can we, I'm sorry, Councilmember Peterson, I do this to you. Can we, um, can I make a friendly, amend, uh, friendly amendment to your motion and that we come back with just item 9A on the first and then 
continue our meeting for 9 BMC tonight? Yeah. Yeah, but I'm, not, I'm having problems participating anyway, but. Okay, what if, um, for the sake of, of us being able to determine at an appropriate time and knowing that by law we need to notify the public within what, 24 hours of a special meeting? Correct. Could, would it make more sense for me to um, revoke my original motion and make a new motion that we bring all of the items on tonight's general government and public hearing, items 9A, B, and C, back to council at uh, a date next week uh, to be determined and posted by the end of this week. If I make that motion, that, that would allow the opportunity for staff to determine with council members over the next three days. Oh, wait, we've got Thanksgiving. All right, well, so we'll help me out here. I, I could say we don't need to formulate this into a motion. I appreciate the effort. I, I like certain things, but you don't need to formulate this into a motion. The council can simply decide, the mayor can decide, um, consistent with what Councilmember Peterson is articulating, that the entire agenda will be continued to a date next week. I will, the city clerk can call the council to determine availability for next week. Um, and we will notice the meeting consistent with the Brown Act requirements, which is 24 hours in advance. And I will defer to the city manager and maybe the clerk if she's on about this. If we're able to get the agenda out, say, out sooner than the Brown Act requires, we can do that. Absolutely. Sorry, I think we're all in agreement. Chloe, I'm sorry, was that you? I just was agreeing. I, we can certainly do that. I will be in touch to get availability tomorrow and we can have the agenda out and notify the public more than the Brown Act requires before the end of day tomorrow so that everyone knows when the meeting is next week. Does that sound okay? That sounds great. Okay. Okay, so I appreciate all of council's work and staff, the, the, <laughs> tonight's work on everything. Um, so tonight we are going to go ahead and close our meeting um, and come to the end, we will come back at a later time next week. Um, for those who are in our audience, just to let you know, uh, just keep an eye out on the website and we will try to notify people as well as best as we can. All right, so we'll go ahead and adjourn at 8, 11 p.m. Thank you everyone for your patience. Um, and for again, for those who are here, um, please share with your those what happened tonight. Thanks again. Thank you, Mayor.